we're gonna enter into the cells. Going to jail is always pretty bad. In some countries, it's not as bad, especially Europe, where it can be almost enjoyable. They have short sentences, sometimes video games, and a lot of activities. However, there are way more nations that take a dimmer view of criminal behavior, and one such nation is Japan. Japan has quite the rep for tough prisons, so let's go check them out. From the legal difficulties facing foreign criminals to the only prison museum in Japan, here's the 20 most terrifying prisons in Japan. <sighs> Number 20. Japanese Prisons In Japan, if you end up in prison, it's because you violated the law and you're serving a long-term sentence. As of March of 2018, Japan has 62 main prisons, 6 designed for youth, and 8 branch facilities. The jails sort inmates based on various factors. For example, the most foreign prisoners are housed in Fuchu Prison in Tokyo, or Tochigi Prison in Tochigi Prefecture. This is a look inside the creepy lifestyle of Japanese prisons. Japanese prisons operate differently than those you might be familiar with. They're particularly strict, aiming to reform inmates so they won't re-offend. The majority of inmates share rooms with 6 to 12 others. These rooms have a traditional Japanese touch, furnished with futons and tatami floors. In some instances, foreign prisoners might be placed in rooms with western-style beds or solitary cells resembling those commonly found outside of Japan. Work in prison varies, including tasks like printing, cooking, cleaning, and woodworking. Prisoners also receive vocational training and are paid for their work, money they can access upon release. During their free time, prisoners can read, watch TV, or listen to the radio, but everything's in Japanese. Your odds of avoiding prison improve if you can demonstrate that you're a generally good person who made an error in judgment. Being young, committing a less severe crime, or causing minor harm to the victim can also work in your favor. These chances increase further if you've made amends, compensated the victim, and show genuine remorse. If you'd rather not end up spending the rest of your days in a Japanese prison, you better hit like and subscribe right away. Number 19. Abashiri Prison In Japan, Abashiri K Musho is the name of a prison located in Abashiri, Hokkaido Prefecture. Established in 1890, it's the northernmost prison in Japan, situated near the Abarashi River and to the east of Mount Tento. The facility mainly houses inmates serving sentences of less than 10 years. An interesting note, the older sections of the prison were relocated to the base of Mount Tento in 1983, and they now function as Japan's only prison museum. The Meiji government, as part of the Meiji Restoration, instituted policies in 1868 for transferring prisoners to Hokkaido. One of the motivations was to populate the island with more Japanese residents. Come April of 1890, over a thousand political prisoners were sent to Abashiri. Many of these were samurai from the Tokugawa era, imprisoned during the Satsuma Rebellion of 1877. The inmates had a broad spectrum of labor duties, ranging from agriculture to construction work. Due to poor water quality in the surrounding area, prisoners had to construct water lines, dams, and reservoirs to secure drinking water and irrigate nearby fields. They were also tasked with building nearby roads to connect Abashiri to more populated southern regions. Specifically, they contributed to the construction of Hokkaido's Central Road. A stretch of this road between Abashiri and Asahikawa, where many prisoners lost their lives, is known as Prisoner's Road. Initial conditions at Abashiri Prison were harsh. Food and rest were scarce, leading to the deaths of over 200 inmates due to malnutrition, accidents, or punishments meted out for escape attempts. Number 18. Tokyo Detention House In Katsushika, Tokyo, you'll find a prison known as Tokyo Detention House. Managed by Japan's Ministry of Justice, it's one of only seven locations in the country where executions are carried out. The facility serves multiple purposes. Detaining individuals who are on trial, have been convicted, or are on row. In April of 2019, a tactical unit called the Special Security Response Team was established there. This particular prison houses one of Japan's seven execution chambers. In Japan, executions are carried out by hanging. The chamber in Tokyo has a trapdoor, activated by one of three buttons in an adjacent room. 
Three staff members press these buttons simultaneously, ensuring that nobody knows who triggered the drop. Inmates walk past a Buddhist statue of Kenon, a bodhisattva associated with compassion on their way to the execution chamber. But there's not much compassion in what happens next. <laughs> The chamber itself is divided into two areas, collectively about the size of a 15 tatami mat room. After the execution, the body drops into a room below where the death is confirmed. A notable inmate who was housed at Tokyo Detention House is Carlos Gossen. Under Japanese law, suspects can be detained there for up to 23 days before formal charges are laid. Number 17. Osaka Detention Center Local Japanese attorneys have pointed out that the steep cost of basic items like toilet paper at Osaka prison makes them unaffordable for most inmates, which they argue is a human rights issue. The Osaka Bar Association urged the prison to revise its pricing. They noted that 800 pieces of tissue were priced at 594 yen, or 4.5 times the regular market rate. Toothbrushes were going for about 181 yen, uh, around 1.7 times their cost outside of prison, and men's underwear was priced at 702 yen, about 1.4 times the usual retail price. While the prison generally provides inmates with daily essentials, inmates also have the option to purchase items from select vendors. According to reports, the prices surged after the Justice Ministry switched the official vendor from a foundation run by ex-prison guards to a Tokyo-based company in 2011. The ministry acknowledged the concern, but stated that prices are as low as they can be and that there are no plans for adjustments at this time. The Bar Association also mentioned that similar pricing issues have been observed at Yokohama Prison and a juvenile facility in Kawagoe. One lawyer said a typical inmate earns around 4,500 yen a month through prison labor. While the quality of products may have gotten better, the prices are prohibitive and limit the freedom to purchase basic necessities. Number 16. Nagoya Detention House A notorious prisoner named Su Kasa was held at the Nagoya Detention House in Higashi Kunafa. He was involved in a brutal attack on a woman who had pulled over on the side of the road. Along with two others, Kasa stole her ATM cards and assaulted her severely, striking her head with a hammer about 30 times, while also choking her with a rope. Though Japan does have a penalty law that could apply to such crimes, it's seldom invoked for a single case. However, public sentiment was highly charged, and many expected that Kasa and his accomplices would receive the sentence. In September of 2007, the victim's mother initiated a petition calling for the penalty for the three attackers. Within just 10 days, the petition garnered 100,000 signatures. She eventually submitted it to the Nagoya District Public Prosecutor's Office with over 150,000 names. By December of 2008, the signature count had risen to 318,000, indicating strong public support for severe penalties for such violent crimes. But in this case, the criminals were banged up for a long stretch and said, Number 15. Kusatsu Special Prison Let's dive into a darker part of Japan's past, the Kusatsu Special Prison. This joint was up and running from 1938 to 1947, built as a home for lawbreakers who also happened to have leprosy. They had to live in public areas designed for people with this disease all across Japan. The conditions were brutal at best, tiny cells without proper heating and hard wood floors that made sleep nearly impossible. And it was mostly made of male nurses trying to keep things under control, which just added more trouble for the female inmates on top of an already messed up situation. This prison wasn't exactly known for its cleanliness or roominess either. Instead, it got infamous for being packed like sardines in a can and dirtier than your dorm room after finals week. Sadly enough, many inmates because of these horrendous living conditions. That's why the place has such an eerie vibe even today. By 1915, talks began about how they'd handle criminals living in these prisons. The laws changed by next year, so those running the places could call the shots on stuff like whether inmates would be locked up or what kind of food they could eat. In late 1938, Kusatsu Special Prison construction wrapped up with eight individual cells tinier than your closet at home. Toilets were a hole in the floor. Imagine using that during winter months when temperatures drop below freezing. And remember those male nurses I mentioned earlier? They pretty much ran the show, dealing with everything from upkeep to keeping inmates in check. Number 14. Fuchu Prison 
Fuchu Prison is about an hour away from downtown Tokyo, and it holds some of Japan's most serious offenders, like dealers and offenders. This facility also houses the only other prison in Japan designated for foreign lawbreakers. Typically, the public can't visit Japanese prisons, but recent controversies led the Justice Ministry to ease its rigid visitation policies. As you enter the 42-acre compound, you'll find it guarded by two uniformed, unarmed wardens. The surrounding fence stands 16 feet tall, and while there are a few watchtowers, the 412 guards and wardens responsible for 2,500 male inmates don't carry firearms. Despite this, incidents like prison breaks and riots are extremely rare in Fuchu and all of Japan's other 58 prisons. When it comes to appearance, guards and prisoners look pretty similar. They both wear comparable attire, the only difference is the color. Brown for inmates and dark green for guards. Unlike in some other countries, Japanese prisoners don't have serial numbers on their shirts. They have small nameplates on their breast pockets, much like the general workforce in Japan. Inmates must adhere to strict rules. They can't remove their prison uniform, regardless of the heat, and writing on the walls is prohibited. Rule violations can lead to a range of punishments from mail restrictions to what officials refer to as penitence sessions. One high-ranked Fuchu official noted that misbehaving prisoners could spend a few weeks in isolation to reflect on their mistakes. Additionally, prisoners are required to work 44 hours per week, on top of maintaining obedience and good behavior. Fuchu offers 21 workshops where inmates can learn various skills, including auto repair, leather work, and woodworking. Number 13, Tokushima Prison. This jail in Tokushima, located 325 miles west of Tokyo, has repurposed an old building to accommodate its elderly inmates. It's among the first in Japan to take this step in response to the country's rising population of older prisoners. Over the past decade, the number of inmates aged 60 or older has increased by 7%, totaling 9,308. As of 2016, they constituted 19% of the entire prison population in Japan. For comparison, in the US, only 6% of prisoners are in this age group, and in South Korea, it's around 11. Many of these older inmates are repeat offenders, a trend experts attribute to the difficulty of finding employment and adjusting to life after prison. One 81-year-old man in Tokushima prison serving a life sentence for a taxi driver and injuring another person six decades ago said, I have a heart condition and used to collapse often at the prison factory. A specific building in the prison is designated for elderly inmates who can't engage in typical labor tasks like making shoes or underwear. This is where he and about 20 other prisoners live, dine, and work. Special meal preparations are made for those who have difficulties with chewing and swallowing. Additionally, the prison employs a caregiver trained in geriatric care to assist inmates in its hospital ward, such as a 92-year-old man who's serving a life sentence. The 81-year-old man has been paroled twice, but returned to prison for violating his parole by drinking. He hopes to be released again to see his 103-year-old mother. Number 12, Sugamo Prison. This Tokyo-based prison was located in what's now Toshima. When it first opened in 1895, Sugamo Prison took inspiration from European jails. By the 1930s, it became a holding place for political prisoners, particularly those who violated the peace preservation laws. It even held allied spies like Richard Sorge, who was executed there on November 7th of 1944. During World War II, the prison was not destroyed by bombings, and it later served as a detention center for suspected war criminals under the Allied occupation. After trials by the International Military Tribunal for the Far East, some convicted individuals were sent to Sugamo for their sentences. On December 23rd of 1948, seven such individuals were executed there. In total, 51 Japanese war criminals convicted in the Yokohama war crimes trials met their end at this facility. The executions took place on April 7th of 1950. Inmates at Sugamo were served Japanese food prepared by Japanese staff and sometimes even by fellow prisoners. Notably, Hideko Tojo, a former prime minister, at times served food to other Class A inmates. Some of the vegetables used in the meals were grown on the prison grounds. The last 18 Japanese war criminals in Sugamo were released on May 31st of 1958. 
After the occupation ended, the Japanese civilian government took control of Sagamo Prison. Most remaining war prisoners were either freed or paroled. The facility ceased to operate as a prison in 1962, and the buildings were dismantled in 1971. Number 11. Yamaguchi Jail In 2007, Mine Rehabilitation Program Center opened its doors in Mine, Yamaguchi Prefecture. It made history as the first prison in Japan to be jointly operated by both the public and private sector. The facility was established to tackle the growing issues of prison overcrowding, but it also wanted to overcome problems like deteriorating conditions and increased workload for staff. It operates under the philosophy of prisons that gain the understanding and support of the citizens. The center engages with the local community and offers a variety of treatment options. The goal is to provide correctional care to first-time offenders who are open to it. This helps them reintegrate into society. It's a collaborative effort involving private industry and national government, but the facility primarily relies on the government for its administration and services. This model places the national government in the driver's seat when it comes to day-to-day -day management of the prison. Number 10. Aikawa Prison For centuries, Sado Island has been known as a place of exile. From the 6th century through to Japan's Middle Ages, the island became a reluctant home for nobles and intellectuals who crossed the ruling class. Among them were the poet Hozumi Aso Miyoyu, who criticized the royal family and the ruler Jun Toku, Japan's 84th emperor, exiled around 1221. In a way, it makes sense that an old prison would be one of the island's hidden treasures. Opened in 1954 and closed in 1972, Aikawa Prison, sometimes referred to as the Aikawa Detention House, has a unique construction. Its buildings are wooden and tucked behind an almost 10-foot-high ivory-covered wall, guarded by an iron gate. It's a rarity in Japan, where many wooden structures have either been replaced or were destroyed during World War II. Despite its somber history, there's a certain captivating beauty to the prison. Many rooms feature large windows framed with meticulous wood trim, and ivy envelops the walls in the warmer months. Open to the public, the prison invites visitors to explore this bittersweet blend of history and beauty. Number 9. Tochigi Women's Prison Tochigi Women's Prison is a standard women's jail that also holds foreign inmates. Located in a rural area north of Tokyo, it houses over 600 offenders. While its setup is similar to that of Fuchu Prison, Tochigi has some more lenient rules. Most of what applies to Fuchu also applies here, but there's a few distinctions. The library at Tochigi doesn't offer as many English language books compared to Fuchu's library. However, the embassy is stepping in to expand the English language collection. Unlike Fuchu, which offers courses in auto mechanics and construction, Tochigi focuses on different vocational training. Here, inmates can learn skills like beautician work, Japanese typing, and sewing. Inmates trained as beauticians do offer some haircuts, but it's limited. For inmates at Tochigi who've advanced to a higher level of development, there's an option to work an additional two hours a day to earn some money for themselves. Number 8. Hiroshima Detention House Miyuki Ueta, a pro inmate, lost consciousness at the Hiroshima Detention Center due to choking on food. Oddly enough, just four days earlier, the former bar worker had also been hospitalized for choking. Ueta, who was 49, had been sentenced to in 2012 for two men in Totori, to whom she owed money. Ueta kidnapped and 47-year-old truck driver Kazumi Yabe in April of 2009. Later that year, in October, she and drowned 57-year-old Hideki Maruyama, who owned an electronics shop. The sentencing judge, Takashi Noguchi, had previously sentenced only one other woman to Kanai Kijima. In 2017, the Supreme Court upheld Ueta's sentence, citing her grave criminal responsibility and cruel crimes based on firm intentions to Hideki Maruyama's son was surprised by the recent events. It's been 14 years since my father and I find it surprising that a bro inmate would this way execution has been taking too long, he said. As of November of 2022, Japan and much of Asia still maintain the penalty. However, three pro inmates recently filed a lawsuit against the Japanese government to end hanging as an execution method. Number 7. Fukuoka Detention House 
two inmates, Koichi Shoji, 64, and Yasunori Suzuki, 50, were executed without any advance notice at the Tokyo Detention Center. Both had been convicted of and their executions were the first to take place in Japan in 2019. Neither man claimed to be innocent. Shoji had one woman and assaulted and killed another in 2001, collaborating with his girlfriend in the crimes. He also assaulted and injured another woman in Tokyo the previous year. Suzuki assaulted an 18-year-old woman and later the 64-year-old woman. He was also found guilty of attempting to assault another woman. Suzuki committed all of these acts between December of 2004 and January of 05. Japan's justice minister authorized the executions. Typically, prisoners only receive a few hours notice or none at all, and the executions are conducted in secrecy. Family and friends usually learn about the execution only after it's taken place. Amnesty International is now urging Japan to abolish both executions and the penalty altogether. Masakatsu Nishikawa was executed in Japan in 2018. Despite the clean floor, good lighting, and soothing sounds of Buddhist texts, the actual execution was carried out in such a harsh manner that no serene atmosphere could mask its brutality. Number 6. Kikuchi Medical Prison from 1953 until 1996, Kikuchi Medical Prison in Koshi City, Kumamoto Prefecture was where Japan confined people who had both leprosy and were convicted of crimes. The prison was managed by the Ministry of Justice. Now, let's backtrack a bit. Japan first opened its leprosariums in 1909, providing care for wandering patients with leprosy, some of whom had also broken the law. By 1915, folks running these leprosariums were actively discussing how to handle their criminal patients. A year later, in 1916, they were granted the authority to make decisions about confinement and custody. For instance, they could lock up prisoners for less than a month without feeding them, a policy that was abandoned in 1947. Between 1912 and 51, several riots broke out in these facilities. The Kusatsu Leprosarium even converted into a special jail in 1939, resulting in what's known as the Kusatsu Special Jail Incident. By August of 1947, it was uncovered by the Japan Communist Party that 22 inmates had either in or after confinement in this special jail, and accountability was hard to establish. Feeling the need for a more specialized prison, a diverse group, including public health officials, heads of leprosariums, and leprosy workers came to an agreement. Matsuki Miyazaki, who managed the Kikuchi Keifuen Sanatorium, mentioned that the majority of directors backed the decision to build this prison in Kikuchi. When it opened its doors in March of 1953, under the management of its first director, Kikuo Yashita, it had room for up to 75 inmates. Toru Yashinaga took the reins as the second director in 1956, and an additional building was added in 1982. But when the law against leprosy was repealed in 1996, the prison lost its reason for existing. Number 5. Pete Bethany Born on April 4th of 1965, New Zealand's captor Peter James Bethany is the brain behind Earth Race Conservation. He works with countries in Asia, Central America, and Africa to enforce fishing laws and combat poaching. At age 45, he was apprehended after boarding the Shonan Maru 2, a security ship in the fleet, from a jet ski at night. Bethany boarded the ship to protest an accident that had sunk his own boat, the Addy Gill, just a month prior. His initial plan was to citizen arrest the ship's captain and present him with a $3 million US bill for the damages to his boat. But before he could do that, the boat sank. Bethany was then detained and later arrested when the ship returned to Japan, where he spent a brief spell in a Japanese prison. Bethany admitted to four of the charges against him, but rejected the most severe one, which accused him of attacking by throwing butric acid, essentially spoiled butter, at whalers during the previous winter. This occurred during one of many confrontations in the Antarctic between the fleet and protesters. While on trial, the Sea Shepherd organization informed Bethany that he was no longer welcome to participate in their campaigns. The reason being that he had violated their policy of aggressive but non-violent direct action by bringing a bow and arrows with him. Number 4. Nara Prison 
The Nara Juvenile Prison, located in Nara, Japan, was established back in 1908 during the Meiji era. It functioned as a prison until 2017 and has some cultural value. It's currently being transformed into a hotel, set to open in 2024. Architect Keijiro Yamashita designed the old Nara prison as part of the Meiji government's modernization effort. When it first opened its doors in 1908, it was quickly overcrowded. By 1910, 935 people were incarcerated there, even though it only had a capacity for 650. The juvenile law was enacted in Japan in 1922, leading to a renaming of the prison in both 1922 and 46. In the latter year, it officially became the Nara Juvenile Prison. Inmates ranged in age from 16 to 26 and had access to educational programs aimed at reducing reoffending. This facility was the first in Japan to implement a program specifically designed to prevent reoffending. Inmates also learn job related skills. For instance, the Wakakusa Barber Shop trains inmates to cut hair for both staff and the public. In 2017, the prison was designated an important cultural asset. Number 3. Kevin M. Mara in a Japanese Prison In 1996, an American citizen imprisoned in Japan filed a lawsuit against the Japanese government, alleging human rights violations similar to those claimed by a New York-based human rights group. Kevin Neil Mara, a 32-year-old from Fairfield, Connecticut, was serving a 4.5-year sentence for over 20 pounds of marijuana into Japan. He asserted that for minor infractions, like opening his eyes during a pre-meal reflection time, he was placed in leather restraints and put in solitary confinement for extended periods. Specifically, Mara mentioned that he spent 10 days in solitary for opening his eyes during this reflection period. Before the solitary sentence even began, he was stripped, placed in a leather harness, and locked in a protection cell for two days. During this time, his hands were tied behind his back and chained. He also claimed he was given special trousers with holes, which he had to use for bodily functions. A study by the Human Rights Group indicated that solitary confinement and intricate physical restraints are standard punishments in Japanese prisons for those who violate any of the intricate rules governing daily life there. Number 2. U.S. Navy Lieutenant's Wife Fights to Free Him the White House has been requested to assist in the return of the wife of a U.S. Navy lieutenant and Mormon missionary, Lieutenant Ridge Alconis, who recently started a three-year prison term in Japan. Alconis was convicted of careless driving in Fujinomiya, Japan, for a May 2021 incident that resulted in two fatalities. His family and wife Brittany explained that he passed out at the wheel due to altitude sickness and faced an unfair trial because of his status as an American military officer. Now that their appeal has been denied, Brittany is urging President Joe Biden to collaborate with U.S. Ambassador to Japan Ram Emanuel to bring her husband back to the U.S. Brittany said that she, Alconis, and their three kids were returning from a camping trip at Mount Fuji when the accident occurred. Alconis lost consciousness mid-sentence while talking to his oldest daughter. His car then crashed into three people and five other vehicles in a restaurant parking lot, resulting in the death of an 85-year-old woman and injuries to her 53-year-old daughter. In court, Alconis cited altitude sickness, supported by a neurologist's report, as the cause of his passing out. However, a Japanese judge found it implausible that Alconis would go from fully alert to incapacitated so suddenly. Number 1. Japan's Jails, a Sanctuary for Seniors? For some older individuals in Japan who don't have a close-knit family, the prospect of living and alone can be unsettling. But oddly enough, some are discovering that life behind bars offers them both care and social interactions. Takako Suzuki, a 76-year-old woman jailed for theft, is serving her second prison term. While incarcerated at Kasamatsu Prison in central Japan's Gifu Prefecture, Suzuki received treatment for her dementia, which has deteriorated to the point where she struggles with basic arithmetic. Ever since turning 70, Suzuki's been involved in theft, particularly shoplifting everyday necessities like food. She's faced multiple arrests for these activities. During her first prison term, she was diagnosed with dementia. Just six days after her release, she was caught shoplifting again and returned to jail. Kasamatsu Prison holds more than 300 women, five of whom are 65 or older. Many inmates need assistance with daily tasks. 
Suzuki, due to her dementia, is unable to participate in the same work activities as other prisoners. Instead, she's assigned simple physical tasks just to keep her engaged. She also requires special attention during mealtime and is seated away from the other inmates because she tends to pinch their food. Notably, shoplifting accounts for 82.5% of crimes committed in women aged 70 and up, with more than 90% of their offenses involving theft, including bag theft. So, do you think Japan's prisons are too harsh? Or are these tough punishments the reason that Japan has an incredibly low crime rate? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.